everybody. Thanks for joining us today for our 15-minute Friday. Uh, today's topic is optimizing video exporting, and it's being presented by uh, Jacqueline Chen. Jacqueline works from our Berkeley, California office, and she's part of the VDC project delivery team. Um, she's got some great experience, and she's going to share her expertise with us today. Uh, Jacqueline, if you'd like to get started, uh, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Sue. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jacqueline Chen. I'm a 4D Deliver Specialist with the Virtual Design Construction Group of Synchro Software. Before I start, I want to thank you for spending time with, uh, with us today in Synchro's 15-minute webinar. I hope you will find it very informational and helpful for implementing 4D on your own projects. Today, I want to go through a couple of basics for optimizing video exporting in Synchro. The agenda that I prepared for you today is to start from several tips and go into export options in Synchro. Also, if you have any questions regarding this topic, please feel free to type it in the question box at the bottom of the window. We will try to answer as many questions as possible during the webinar. For those we are not able to cover, we will follow up via email. Let's start now. So, to to export an animation, you will have to create it in the animation editor, which can be found in Windows Animation Editor. I'm not planning to walk you through all the steps, but there are two important tips that I want to offer here. First, if you have a task that has a very short duration as compared to the overall duration of the schedule or the project, but you want to capture it in the animation, you should consider to capture both the start and finish of the task on the focus time channel here in the animation editor and extend the distance between the two keys to make sure it's more than two seconds for your eyes to be able to detect it. If the task has equipment and movements along a 3D path, you need to consider to extend more. I'm going to give you an example. For this task, install temporary hard sanding here. It has a duration of one day. I am going to move the focus time to the start of the task. And then let's say we need to capture it here. And then I'll right click to move the focus time to the end of the task. And then one, two, three seconds. I want to make sure my eyes will be able to capture this task. So I will give it a three second. Um, distance from the start and the end of this task on the focus time channel. Okay, this should give you enough time on, in the animation. The second tip is that if you don't like a lot of camera movements such as rotating, zooming in or out in your animation, you can simply change the interpolation type from line to step so that the camera directly jumps from one view to the next to avoid some unnecessary camera movements. By that, I will use this animation that I created. Let's compare what I explained just now. So by default, Synchro uses interpolation type um, line um, for the camera to move from one view to the next. Okay, let's play it to see what it does now. Okay, you can tell that my camera um, constantly moves from this, this first view to the second view. So what I usually do is I would change the interpolation type from line to step. Let's see what it looks like now. So it keeps um, the same viewpoint. And then on this specific second, it would jump, it would jump automatically, automatically uh, to the next viewpoint without any unnecessary camera movements. Okay, this, these are the two tips I want to give you for creating animation first. And then you can simply, as you remember, you can simply create an animation by capturing focus time from Gantt chart and viewpoints from your selected 3D window in Animation Editor. Several other tips for our audience today before we go into animation export. If you're planning to include Gantt chart in your animation, which I'm about to cover next, consider to adjust the font size to at least 25 or bigger in home options. And then Gantt chart font font size to adjust to make it 25 or larger. 
The second tip is that if you want to make sure that you can see the tasks that are associated with the 3D assignments showing in the animation, you can consider to apply a task filter with look ahead in all resources. What I'm going to do here is that I will go into Navigator, Filters, enable this task filter I created, which is a two-week look ahead task filter that has um, that filters tasks by both look ahead and resources. In the look ahead options, I, I define the look ahead duration as 14 days, and then make sure this is a dynamic look ahead uh, based on the focus time in your Gantt chart. Also underneath resources, I marked all the resources that I use in this project, I have in this project. So what this filter does is that it, this will eliminate the tasks that are neither in my two-week look ahead window nor have any 3D assignments. But this is up to you to decide. Now you can see in the Gantt chart, if I move my focus time, I will only see the tasks that happens within the two weeks window um, and also have 3D assignments. Okay. Um, the, third op the third tip that I want to offer is that if you want to have two windows side by side in your animation and the second window has a static sectional view, make sure the first window is selected before you go into an anima the animation export. This will tell the computer that this is the main window that the created animation will be applied to. I will give an example here. Now that I have one 3D, uh, 3D window already, this will be my main, main window, but I want to add another second window for a sectional view. So while this second, secondary window is selected, I will go into viewpoints and then apply this previously created um, viewpoint. Right click to choose activate in selected 3D view. Now you can see the second window is actually showing the interior elevation of this building here. But before I go into animation export or AVI, export AVI options, I will need to make sure my win main window is selected so that the computer will know that the animation, the created animation will be applied to this main window. Okay, uh, now we're done with all the settings before I go into export animations. Um, let's export this animation that I prepared for the 15 minute webinar. I will go into Navigator, Animations, find the animations that I created, and then right click on the animation, go to Export AVI. There are two main tabs that I want to cover in this, um, um, I want to cover today. They are resolution and content. I'm planning to walk you through the options one by one. In the resolution tab, you will be asked to define resolution by size of the video and frame rate first. Uh, normally, we will use width for 2080 height for 720 for a 720p standard definition video. This can be used for a draft export. If a higher resolution is needed, normally we will use width for 1920, uh, height for um, 1080 for a 1080p high definition width video. The higher the resolution is, the, the slower the export process will be. You can, of course, increase the width and height of the video export as much as you want, but it will require a better computer with higher specs. The second is uh, frame rate. Uh, just imagine that an animation export process is actually your computer taking a lot of screenshots. Frame rate will let you decide how many images that you want your computer to take per second. For um, an animation that has a lot of camera movements, you will need to consider to use a frame rate at least, uh, at least 20 to 30. The higher the frame rate goes, the slower the export process will be. In duration, for the duration options, you can define the start and finish time of your animation that you want to export and the speed and also how your computer will split the video. They are default to the beginning, the, the start and finish date, uh, the start and finish of the animation that you want to, the one, that you want your computer to export are default to the, the start and beginning of your um, um, animation. So um, normally we will also uh, split the animation into s smaller segments. In this case, um, I will split every five seconds. Uh, this, is, this is because we want to limit the file size. Please also keep in mind that no software will like huge files. 
In the compression codec, uh, codex, I want to introduce two um, computer, compression codecs that I use uh, more often than the others, right? So the first one is Microsoft Video One. The second one is Full Frames Uncompressed. The Full Frame Uncompressed option should be faster than the other options because your computer doesn't need to compress the video um, during the export process. But each of the video segments tends to have larger sizes. Compre but compression can always be done later in a post-processing software. Also, in file for export, you will need to decide where you want to store the video clips. Um, this option here allows you to export the animation as a sequence of images with given quality. This can help you to um, export, uh, you know, a, a sequence of images for the purpose of, you know, generating your 4D report or review before your export. Okay, this is pretty much for the resolution tab. In the content tab, you can uh, you can decide what you want to show um, in your animation. So this is a typical layout that I would use, which includes a Gantt chart at the top, two windows um, in the middle, with the focus time at the bottom right corner of the second secondary window, and the, a timeline at the bottom of this layout. You can adjust the size of this window by moving the cursor to the border. Once it turns into a bi-directional arrow, you will, able to be, uh, you will be able to adjust it. And then also the uh, window you're adjusting right now has, a, uh, has been highlighted in red uh, for the border. You can also bring a window to the front of the other window by simply select it. You can see the focus time um, is selected and then move it up and down to bring it to the back or bring it to the front. Also in the content tab, uh, you will be asked to choose the graphic card. For a high quality video, I usually choose DirectX 11 and turn on anti-aliasing at, at least four times or above. Anti-aliasing will help smooth eject appearance of a diagonal lines. The higher the, the higher number you choose for anti-aliasing, the slower the export process will be. Then usually, then usually I will leave my computer, uh, start rendering before I go to sleep, and the next morning you should have a very decent animation exported. And you will need to do some post editing and get it ready for your project team to review your 4D plan. Okay, this is pretty much what I have for today. Um, I'm open for questions right now. Okay, thanks, Jacqueline. That was great. Um, I do have one question here, and uh, feel free to uh, send us the questions in the question panel, and we'll get to uh, a few of them. Uh, so it says, how do I change the week number in the animation um, in, in, to create an animation? Yes, so uh, so I think the audience is asking about this week number here. As you can tell, since I'm at the beginning of the project and then my settings are right, so it's showing actually week one for the start of my project. But sometimes, you know, uh, I found users uh, don't know where to change it. So it can actually be changed in Navigator project and then in project zero day, well, of a project date zero, you will need to uh, make it uh, the same date as the start of your project. For my project, it'll be, yeah, I think if I go back to, let me uncheck the filter. Yeah, so you can see it's March the 2nd. So after this is done, you should be able to see the updated week number in your animation export or your focus time. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. Um, and there is a question, I don't know that we have time. Um, it says, how do I create an animation? I think we'll save that for another time, but uh, Jacqueline will follow up with you. 
Uh, one other quick question here. Do you recommend using Camtasia? Uh, yes. Uh, that, well, this is the software that, that I use for um, post-processing or post-editing to, you know, stitch the video clips together and then to add those subtitles. Uh, but I believe there are other software too in the market, out in the market that you can take advantage of. 